Hey there everyone, welcome back to Tilly Sports. Really excited for this video as we're going to be discussing Bradley Beal trades as there's been rumors and reports specifically from Sham Sharania and Adrian Wojnarowski about a potential for a Bradley Beal trade and what his future could potentially look like with the Washington Wizards post the hire of Michael Winger, who I think has a very tough offseason ahead of him where he's gonna to have to make key decisions on three really important players for the Washington Wizards. Those players being Bradley Beal, who we're gonna discuss in this video, Kristaps Porzingis, who has a player option. Can he find a way to navigate a sign and trade or does he just flat out opt into that contract? And then also Kyle Kuzma, who is definitely not opting into his player option. Can he find a way to facilitate a sign and trade there? Does he keep him with the organization long-term? I think there's a lot of questions to ask about Washington and I think it's gonna be an interesting team to monitor going forward. I do have a discussion video on the Washington Wizards and what a rebuild could potentially look like for them up on the channel. I would recommend checking that one out after this video. And I think Bradley Beal to start this off is one of those really polarizing players right now in the NBA because you think about Bradley Beal from a talent perspective and of course you'd say, well, every team would love to have him. He's a skilled shot maker, can handle the ball, does a decent job facilitating for others. I think that's been an area where he's grown throughout his career from where he was as a prospect coming out of Florida to where he currently is for the Washington Wizards. Of course, he had to step up big time post John Wall in his time in Washington. And I think you ask people around the league and the talent, you'd say, oh, this is for sure a player that you wanna have. But then you look at the contract and you have to take a, a big gulp because it's a hard to swallow contract. He makes a ton of money. It was a five year, $251 million deal. And he's going to be in his 30s. And once he's in his mid 30s, are you gonna be wanting to pay him 50 to $60 million a year? I think the answer to that should be an astounding no, but there's going to be a lot of desperate teams this off season, teams that are hungry to take a step forward, try and win and, and try and add some really good talent to their roster. So it becomes a very unique situation in which teams are trying to add talent and it might come at a little bit of long-term risk to them by making a trade for Bradley Beal. And I also think because of that, when you look at the actual packages that you know it could take to land uh, a, a player in a trade, you have to send out money. There's a lot of risks involved just in general. And then because of how much money he makes, what's the value look like? And I asked my Discord, uh, group this and Zach one of the most frequent responders on there uh, Actually said that he could try and figure out a trade But he won't like it for the team getting Beal and that's exactly how I feel Throughout the majority of these trades because Beal is really good. You have to give up something Washington's not just gonna give him away for free But if you give up assets for a player that expensive on that big of a contract you might find yourself on the losing side of the trade in the long-term approach and maybe if you win a, a championship year one or year two it kind of vindicates the whole thing obviously but i think that's going to be tough to do if you guys do enjoy the video make sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel for more nba content and nba draft content hit that notification bell join the discord server link is in the description for that without further ado let's jump into our first trade and it's a deal here between the Washington Wizards, of course, and the Philadelphia 76ers. And this is one of the lesser packages that I could see the 76ers, uh, this is really the most that they have to offer, but I could see this being one of the lesser packages that the Washington Wizards could potentially receive in trade negotiations this offseason. Now, I think it's very important to note that Bradley Beal has a no trade clause. So he does have a little bit of a say in where he goes and he can really dictate what the market looks like for him. For example, if he says, send me to Philly, I'm not going anywhere else. Washington really has two options. It's don't trade Beal, keep him, or trade him to where he wants to go, which could theoretically be Philadelphia. And the reason that Philadelphia is a potential landing spot here is under the assumption that James Harden potentially dashes in free agency over to the Houston Rockets, which would open up the pathway and the need for kind of a shot creating shot making guard again in Philadelphia. Beal comes in the door here and what is obviously uh, in a good reason like Philadelphia needs that type of player if they lose Harden but Washington specifically what are they getting back in this deal they get Tobias Harris who is on an expiring deal going into next offseason but he's essential in making the money work here in this 
fashion. They also get Firk and Korkmaz, who goes a long way in helping the money here too, kind of bridges the gap just a little bit. You see the Wizards actually help the 76ers a little bit financially here by taking on a little bit of extra salary, a little bit more than they have to, to help facilitate this deal. Korkmaz, he can shoot a little bit, maybe finds a role with the Wizards, but nonetheless, he's kind of in here more so for money. Then you get a 2029 first round pick, which is a long-term asset, something that Michael Winger and Ted Leonsis, the owner of the Washington Wizards, would have to wait on quite a while to see any results from that, obviously. But I think that's okay for Washington because the number one goal for this team right now should be accruing assets. And if you can get an asset for Bradley Beal, I think it's an okay starting point. You also get three second round picks, one of them being next year's draft, one in 2027 and one in 2029. So you're getting four total selections for Bradley Beal. And to me, if I could get anything for Bradley Beal, I would do it simply because I think Beal is a negative contract at this point, just with how much money he's owed. I think it's gonna be really hard to win with Beal as one of your two best players. I think Philadelphia making this trade would probably be a long-term mistake for them because they're committed to Bradley Beal's contract while he's going to be aging. And I don't know if it's enough to put Joel Embiid over the top and get the Sixers team to where they wanna go. So because of that, I think the Sixers would be losers here in this trade, even though it doesn't look like the Wizards are getting that much in return. You could definitely argue that. I just think the direction of the Wizards with Beal isn't that good. I think keeping him long-term doesn't really do anything for you positively. And moving off of him, if you can get assets in, it's a huge win, in my opinion, for the Wizards. But I think that there are stronger offers that the Wizards could potentially receive this offseason via trade. So let's jump into the second one now. And this is one between the Washington Wizards and the Brooklyn Nets. And I think it's a pretty good offer in general, uh, just given the fact that there's three first round picks coming back in the door, which is two more than we saw in the last deal. Now, part of the reason why there's an extra first in there on top of just two, there's three of them. Part of that is because the Wizards are absorbing Ben Simmons contract, which is a significant amount of money, not for one year, but for two years. So you're paying him through 2025. It is a pretty significant investment and commitment of money for a team looking to rebuild for Washington, which is why they get incentivized with another selection here. The Wizards also take in Patty Mills contract, who's an expiring, doesn't hurt them in any way. And they get a young player in Cam Thomas, who of course earlier this year had a massive breakout week where it seemed like he was scoring 40 points a game every single night for about a week or two long. Uh, but realistically, Cam Thomas, there's some significant upside to him as a player. There's also some things that people overlook when they talk about his scoring capability. Now he is a really true pure shot maker. I think if you look back at his LSU film, that was something I was a big believer in. I think Cam Thomas is extremely talented. I think that in the right system situation, he could be a 20 point per game scorer in the NBA. Now, does that mean his team's gonna win a ton? No, but I think if you're the Wizards here, you look at Cam Thomas as an awesome get in this trade for Bradley Beal. You think about Denny Avdia, Corey Kispert, kind of as the surrounding pieces, Daniel Gafford. I think those guys all fit around Cam Thomas pretty well. Now, honestly, Cam Thomas might grow into that Bradley Beal type role. Not that he'll be necessarily as good as Beal, but I think he would definitely put up numbers in year one for Washington. And then you look at the draft compensation, you're getting picks 21 and 22 in this draft. The Wizards already hold pick eight as well. So you would have three first round picks in this year's draft after making this trade. And you get one long-term asset, that 2027 first via Philadelphia. It gives the Wizards a lot of flexibility. I think Michael Winger knows all about that in his tenure in Oklahoma City, working with Sam Presti and then going to the Clippers and being really in charge of operating and, and manifesting the whole Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, to LA situation that was really built on the back of acquiring assets, acquiring extra and additional draft picks. And now Michael Winger starts his collection of picks here in this draft and in future drafts by getting these three first round picks, he gets a young player in Cam Thomas. Ben Simmons really does become somewhat of a, a long-term, can we rehab him back? Can he recover from his back surgery and back injury that he has and get back to the player that he once was? Because if he does, it's a home run trade for the Wizards because you're getting three first, Cam Thomas, and then hopefully an 
all defense type of Ben Simmons. Now, my guess is he doesn't get back there, but you can at least hope and pray that he does. And really, if you're Washington, you can definitely absorb those two years of his contract. And then for Brooklyn, you are landing Bradley Beal and you don't really have to carve out a lot of your current consi uh, consistent and existing rotation. Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson, who's a restricted free agent, I'm sure he'll be back in Brooklyn. Spencer Dinwiddie's still here. Of course, last time we saw Spencer Dinwiddie and Bradley Bill playing together didn't work out very well. So maybe the Wizards would go back, or the Nets, excuse me, would go back out into the marketplace with some of their other assets that they have. Explore a Dinwiddie trade. Maybe Dorian Finney-Smith could get rerouted somewhere as well. They have a lot of pieces that they can move off of and kind of retoggle this roster around Beal and Bridges, which I do think is a pretty good duo. Now, are they good enough to make significant noise in the East? Maybe not, but they'd have to find some of those other moves. Maybe another star becomes available. The Nets are loaded up with assets after that Kevin Durant trade. They actually do have a lot to trade. They have that 2029 Dallas first as well from the Kyrie Irving trade, which I do think should be looked at as a pretty valuable asset long term. So the Nets have pieces that they could look to trade and explore trades with. And because of that, I think that they're a very interesting team to be a potential Beal option. I think this is actually a pretty fair trade. All in all, now I think that the Nets are giving up a ton of draft picks here, but they're one of the few teams that can really afford to do that. Uh, and that makes sense to buy in on Beal now because I do think they need more shot making, shot creation, especially post Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving era there in Brooklyn. I think Beal is a guy that does make some sense and he brings stability to that organization, which I think is something that they've been lacking as well since first signing Durant and Irving, what feels like a decade ago now with how long and drawn out that whole situation was. Moving on to our next trade now, we have a deal between the Washington Wizards and the Los Angeles Clippers. And I've talked at length already about Michael Winger. And of course, he comes from the Clippers organization where he was the GM, now he's the president of Monument Sports. And he's going to have some decisions to make for Washington. And I think there's gonna be some familiarity, of course, with the team he used to GM, the Clippers. And I think that those relationships could go a long way in building out a trade and a, a potential trade between the Clippers and Wizards I think does make some serious sense. My best friend is a big time Clippers fan. I asked him about it. Who says no in this trade? And he's like, I think that's actually a pretty good deal all in all. So there's not three first round picks in here, but there isn't that type of Ben Simmons contract that the Wizards would have to eat up and kind of absorb. This opens up their flexibility long term. They get some pieces that they could probably reroute other directions. The Clippers land Bradley Beal, who I think would instantly become the third best player on the team, which is really the whole point of making this move, is you're making a massive upgrade to your rotation. You're making a massive upgrade to the talent level on your team. Yes, it costs you a couple of draft picks and some good depth, but the Clippers, with how deep they are as a team, they're one of the few teams that can afford to send depth out the door. Now with this new CBA, there might be long-term ramifications from this, but they also do get back DeLon Wright, who I think would be a, a pretty nice solution as a backup point guard. I think Terrence Mann would rotate into the starting role. DeLon Wright gives them a little bit of that downhill creation. His drive and kick game actually would be really good for the Clippers. Uh, and I think, you know, DeLon Wright's not like a 30 minute a game guy, but I think for 15 to 25 minutes a night, uh, depending on the situation, which game, which matchups, he could give them really good minutes in spot situations which i think would be a huge win for the clippers back in this deal to make the money work plus it's not a long-term commitment to his money either since there's only one year remaining and for the wizards you get eric gordon to kind of balance out the money here very possibly you could reroute him somewhere else for a couple second round picks i think it would be something worth looking into uh to say the very least but at 21 million dollars it is a, a pretty steep price to pay for a one-year rental but for Washington, it's just about making the money work in a Beal trade here. Marcus Morris Sr., also only on a one-year deal. So again, you're not taking long-term money in. These are guys who are on short, expiring deals that Washington could really wipe their hands with a year from now and say, look, we're not planning on the Eric Gordon or Marcus Morris Sr. being part of our long-term future. And it makes perfect sense because those two players are relatively far into their careers, both well into their 30s. I think Marcus Morris Sr. has had some real slip in his play over the last 12 months or so where he's just not nearly as mobile as he used to be. I think defensively took a big step back this past year. But you are getting Norm Powell, who I think could be a piece that the Wizards look to keep from this trade because uh, he does, first of all, have experience with Michael Winger. Michael Winger was the one who executed the trade, bringing him in from Portland. 
So there's already that relationship built there between player and GM, or in this case, president. And I think also uh, with Norman Powell is on a three year, $18 million a year type of deal, you have time to maybe build up his value, feature him as a scorer. Could he average 20 plus points a game? As a, a lead guy, I 100% believe he could. And then maybe you reroute him somewhere else for a future draft pick if a team comes calling interested in his services. And then on top of that, you get pick number 30 in this draft. So not quite as strong of draft compensation you're getting in this deal as you were in that Brooklyn Nets trade. The Clippers have less to offer. But again, this comes down to that relationship between Winger and the Clippers organization and, and kind of the comfortability level between those two sides negotiating with each other. We've seen Michael Winger execute a trade with Sam Presti, someone he had a relationship with. And then of course, with uh, now being in Washington, a, a trade with the Clippers could make some significant sense as well. You get that pick 30 and you get a 2028 20, first unprotected, which I think would be a cream of the crop type of asset because with where the Clippers currently are at, you never know, maybe they'll be able to bring more talent in the door later because they've grown into a pretty sizable market with Steve Ballmer as their owner. But you think about Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Bradley Beal, where they're all at currently age-wise and where they're at in their careers. By 2028, I don't think you can count on either of those, or any of those three guys to be high minutes, high contributors at that point of their careers. So that pick, maybe it's a rebuilding Clippers team and maybe it's a, a top three, top five pick. That's what you're selling yourself on here if you're Washington, is you're not taking in long-term money. You're getting Norm Powell, who you can probably reroute somewhere else or continue to keep on your roster. Pick 30 in this year's draft and maybe a cream of the crop asset for years down the line that opens up more flexibility for Washington with a Beal trade. Moving on to our final deal here, and it's a one with the Miami Heat. And I think this is one destination that makes the most sense. And this is one that was heavily discussed on our Discord. Again, links in the description for that. Go join in there. We talk about a ton of different things about the NBA and just basketball in general. So I really recommend joining. But for the Miami Heat, landing Bradley Beal, you could argue that this team was maybe just one good shot maker, one good shot creator away from being in a spot uh, where they would be NBA champions. They of course lost in five games to the Denver Nuggets. Now I would say they were pretty competitive throughout the series. It's not like they got completely pulled over, but I do think that they were pretty thoroughly outmatched. And I think the addition of a big time player like a Bradley Beal, who has scored over 30 points per game in his career at one point, this past season averaged about 24 points a night, he can really fill it up. And I think one thing about Miami over the last three, four years, and one area we've pointed to about this team is, hey, when they're not hitting a bunch of perimeter shots off of driving kicks or some of those Bam Adebayo dribble handoffs, this offense gets a little stagnant and they just don't score the ball with the best of them in the NBA. I think Beal would help solve that. And I think it's really imperative, again, with Beal's no trade clause, for a team to acquire Bradley Beal, it might not cost as much as you would think, given his contract and the fact that Beal can control his future. If he says to the management, look, I'm only going to say yes to Miami. And if he becomes public about that, Miami knows that they're in a spot where they don't have to give up a ton to get him. If the Wizards are kind of destined to move off of him, the Heat don't have to break open the piggy bank, so to speak. So instead of giving up Tyler Hero, they're actually gonna give up Kyle Lowry and his expiring contract, which I know Wizards fans would probably say, hey, we'd love to have Tyler Hero, but I think the Wizards, they're in a spot where they're gonna be okay with actually bottoming out and looking through the draft again, kind of like what they did with John Wall when they drafted him a few years ago, not a few years ago, over a decade ago now, crazy how time passes, but Kyle Lowry, like you get him in, it's a one-year thing. You can play him if you want to. Otherwise, maybe you can reroute him somewhere if a team has interest. I'm not sure if that's going to be really the case or not. Maybe you buy him out. But again, there's no long-term commitment to money. You take him, Victor Oladipo, who is likely going to opt in to that player option. He won't play for you either, but he's an expiring deal. So again, no real long long-term commitment to money. You get two young players, Haywood Highsmith, who's actually in his mid-20s now at this point. He's not very young, but he's, I think, pr proven himself a little bit. He's got very active hands defensively. He's kind of a pick artist when it comes to uh, poking the ball loose from the ball handler. I think he gives the Wizards an intriguing defender, which I think would go pretty well with Gafford and Avdia on their current roster. You also get Nikola Jovic, who has an intriguing offensive skill set and is still, and is still extremely young. A player who 
I think the Wizards would look at kind of a foundation piece in this trade and a player that they're going to say, look, we're not trading Beal even with his no trade clause unless we get this. And it would be Nikola Jovic. And the Wizards also get a 2023 first, which would be pick number 18. One of the best assets we've actually seen in the trade discussion so far for Bradley Beal in this video. And then you're also getting that 2028 first round pick unprotected from the Miami Heat as well. So two firsts, two decently young players, one of them very young in Nikola Jovic, and then two expiring contracts that you don't really have to hold against the books long term. Those are the four trades I've kind of mocked up here for the Washington Wizards. And I think all of them honestly are pretty balanced, fair value trades where Beal, he could realistically walk, walk in, help the Sixers, especially if they don't have Harden, help the Nets, I think a lot with their half court creation. He would significantly help the Clippers, especially in games that Kawhi or Paul George or both miss. And then also for the Miami Heat, uh, I think it could be the piece that they're missing. The kind of, hey, let's take the next step forward offensively. I think that Bradley Beal would give that to them. Uh, I think he's a, a significantly big upgrade for them. And I, I think keeping Tyler Hero would be a huge win for the Miami Heat because you probably bring him back off the bench, kind of pivots back into that six man role he was in, you know, 14, 16 months ago. And I think because of that, the Heat's offense is just significantly better. And they're uh, a team that I think would be taken a lot more seriously when it comes to their half court capabilities and just scoring prowess in general. I do hope you guys did enjoy this video. It was a lot of fun recording, talking about some Bradley Beal trades. Of course, the rumors have been swirling and circulating. The Wizards are in a very fascinating spot in their franchise history right now. I think that Michael Winger's got a tough task ahead of him, but this is really going to be what potentially defines his tenure in Washington is how he operates and manages a Bradley Beal trade, what he does with Porzingis and Kuzma. And I think because of that, there's a lot of upside, but there's also a lot of risk in how he goes about these negotiations and discussions. I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, check out some of the other videos as well, and we'll catch you in the very next utility sports video.